Good morning. You are most welcome here at St. Helen Catholic Church for this Sunday's Eucharistic celebration. It is New Year's Day in the church. It is the first Sunday of Advent, year C, and in this new year, we are called to walk as people of the way, as one in communion, together in participation and united in mission. In today's Gospel, Jesus urges us to stay awake, to be prepared so that we can stand in confidence before the Son of Man at the final judgment. We pray in this time of Advent that we be not distracted by the material values of the world, but keep a focus on the real meaning of finite lives. Let us be silent for a moment, preparing to encounter Jesus in this liturgy. Before we begin, we respectfully ask that you please turn off your mobile device or put it on silent mode as we strive to participate fully at the Mass, making it a genuine act of worship of God and respect to others. We would also like to remind you to please do not chew gum in the church and during and receiving the Holy Communion for the respect and the sacredness of the body of Christ. Holy Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Gregory Jacob, requested by his mother, for the repose of the soul of Gershon Franz, requested by Eustace Franz and Jean Gardy, for the repose of the soul of David Dan Contigo, requested by his wife Peggy Del Contigo, in memory of Dane Del Contigo, requested by the Pastoral Family Ministry, Thanksgiving blessings for Kay and Morris Kent on their wedding anniversary, requested by the Pastoral Family Ministry, birthday blessings for Jalisa J. Estelle, requested by Mother. Please rise now and welcome our Senator Father Lucien and join us in singing with enthusiasm our opening hymn.
and Happy New Year. We began a new liturgical year in the church, a new year in the church. And uh, with that, we start the new season, the season of Advent. Before we enter into this uh, celebration, we are going to bless the Advent with all by the apple, and we're gonna be going to light the first candle. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May God, who enlightens every heart, be with you all. My sisters and brothers, this morning we began a new church year with the celebration of the Advent season. Let us open our hearts to God's love as we prepare to welcome Christ into our hearts and lives. The candles of our way remind us that Jesus Christ came to conquer the darkness of sin and to lead us into the light of his glorious kingdom. A reading of the book of prophet Isaiah. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light upon those who dwell in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you, as at the harvest, as men make merry when dividing spoils. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder, Counselor, God's Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. The words of the Lord. Lord our God, we praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, the hope of the people. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the Savior of every nation. Lord God, let your blessing come upon us as we light the candles of this way. May this way and its light be a sign of Christ's promise to scatter the darkness of sin and vision and to bring us all to eternal life. May he come quickly and not delay. We ask this to Christ our Lord. I confess to the Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have the great teaching in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have felt to do, through my thought, through my thought, through my words in this thought. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary and Virgin, all of the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us for 
for one another and for all, just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts, to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones. Amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you should conduct yourselves to please God, and as you are conducting yourselves, you do so even more, for you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord. It is a new year. It 
is a new year in our church for us uh, Christians. It is a new year, and uh, the church, in her wisdom, gave us my brothers and sisters three cycles in uh, the we call it the liturgical year, and each cycle invites us to grow, to grow in a relationship with the Lord. To come closer to Christ. And every day we come to church, we come to Mass, every Sunday we come to Mass. We come to Mass listening to the Word of God. And allow the, the Word of God transforms us. And sometimes we heard uh, 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 one of the critics. Critics don't understand me to us. Oh, we Catholic, we do not know, we don't we don't read the Bible, which is a lie. Because we in that circle, liturgical year circle, we we read the entire Bible. The entire Bible. And everything we do as Catholics turn around the word of God. We don't ask you, we don't question you to memorize verse by verse, verse, by verse. But everything we do, everything you Catholic do, it has a biblical foundation. That's the word of God in it. So this uh, liturgical year we began uh, the year C. It is a year that the Lord invites us. The church invites us to work together, to journey together, to walk on the to walk the way. A way that help me, helps you to understand we are on a journey together. We are on a journey together in communion with each other, in communion with our Lord, in communion with our church. And we are called to participate actively. Actively. Just come and we come to Mass every um, once upon a time on a Sunday when we have time. When we have time, and then some of us, and some people, you know, I don't think this church was going to just demolish this point when they, uh, I, I don't want to say that, but many of them. When they come back to this church, they would have seen the church disappear. They would say, oh, where is the Where is the church? Because people, we don't, many of them do not come to church. Do not fulfill our obligation to come to the Lord, to come to Sunday Mass, to come to worship the Lord, to come to give thanks to God. To spend one hour with your family, one hour with your community, one hour to serve this great sacrifice. For you to be witness and to participate. We are called to participate, we are called to engage. In, engage in the work of evangelization. If we are not engaged, how come we say we are a Christian? How come we say that we are a Catholic? We have to be engaged, my brothers and sisters. We have to take our faith seriously. And we have to love our faith. We have to love our church. But most, first and foremost, we have to love the Lord. We have to fall in love with the Lord. And many times, People do not really come to church. And sometimes they complain about that. They complain, oh, you know, when I come, oh, the priest, oh, you know, the mess does not, does not feel me. It's not the priest who will feel you. It's the Holy Spirit. And how you feel, for example, when you, and then ask yourself, with what kind of disposition? What with what kind of disposition that I am coming to church? If you wake up in the morning, you wake up in the morning, you you shower, you you prepare your you know your clothes, and then 
and you get ready to move from us. But I have all this kind of motivation, but when you come here, do you know, do you understand when you open this door of the church, it is the Lord who welcomes you? Because you come to the house of God to worship God. Because He is there waiting for you together with all the saints, with all the angels, with all the archangels, right here, surrounded by this altar. So there are things, my brothers and sisters, that my eyes, your eyes, could not see. But we could, we could see, we could comprehend it by the eyes of faith. The eyes of faith. What we are doing that, what we are doing here is not a mockery. We are celebrating life, we are celebrating Christ. We are celebrating Jesus Christ, the one who opened the grave, the one who gave us new life, the one who invited us to be part of his life. That's what we celebrate every Sunday when we gather here. And that's why Jesus calls us to be witness of his love. Witness of His presence, and for us to go out to spread the good news, to share your experience, your spiritual experience, to other, to our brothers and sisters, to be an instrument of hope, an instrument of hope. So it is very important for us to take our faith seriously, my friend. And we are called to unite, to be united, to be united in a mission, the mission of evangelization, to bring others, to send our nets, to cast our nets. The same way Jesus has called the disciples, He has called each and every one of us to be His instrument. Wherever, whatever you are doing in your, in your life, whatever position you hold, whatever things you're doing, you are called to be an instrument of His love. And don't be shy to say who you are. Don't be shy to, to live your faith. Don't be shy to give witness. Don't be shy. If you fall in love with someone, you should not be afraid of saying that I am falling in love with someone. If you fall in love with Christ, you should not be shy that you, to say to others that you fall in love or fall in love with Christ. But they will know that you are falling in Christ with Christ. You are falling in love with Christ. It is through your lives, not by lips, through the action, to the way. To the way you position yourself, to the way that you are giving witness, testimony of your faith. Many of us as Catholics, sometimes we are Catholic here in this church when we gather here, we are Catholic. But as soon as we get out of this door, we take up the heart of the Catholic. We take up the heart. We change color. Change color like those iguanas sometimes changing colors in our parking lot. Eh? <laughs> you are Christians, I am a Christian. I should not be afraid to say, I should not be embarrassed to say that I am a Catholic. And I should be proud of my faith, of who I am. So my friends, at the beginning of this liturgical year, it is a message of hope that is given to us today. Our gaze turns to the future, to a horizon that is not closed and that opens up all possibilities, all possibilities. And the Word of God gives us that today. Even the Word of God seems to be a little tough, a little bit scary. But you and I should not be worried, should not be filled with anxiety when we heard, when we hear all these messages because we know where we stand. We know that we are walking with the Lord. We know God is on our side. We know that God is a faithful God. 
God always keeps His promise. And He tells us that the Word of God speaks to us in order to prepare us for their hand. To prepare us and to know where we stand, where we're going. Because He doesn't want to take us by surprise. He doesn't want for us to be surprised. He wants us to be ready. But He invites us to live life. Life with a joyful spirit. And that is what Advent is about. It's about joy. It's about lifting up your spirit. Waiting for your master. Waiting for your king. Waiting for your redemption. For our redeemer. Waiting for our savior. We are waiting for a great king. The king of kings. The lord of lords. Last Sunday we celebrated. We celebrated, last Sunday we celebrated Christ the King. We acknowledge His sovereignty, His kingship of our life. We surrender ourselves, ourselves to Him because we know He is the only one. And without Him, there is no other. We know that He is the Alpha, He is the Omega, He is the end, He is the beginning. He is everything for us, and without Him, our life has no meaning. So it is very important, my brothers and sisters, for us to acknowledge Christ. Like today, Prophet Jeremiah used a beautiful image, which is that, that of the patching of birth and growth. He's talking about a shout of, of Jesus, a seed. This includes in the seed, it is also in the newborn child. In the efforts of learning, in the steps of a new career, of a new relationship, or even of a vocation. So what are your expectations? What are your great expectations? As we are living in a very strange world, my friends. In a very difficult world. A world when you hear what is going on and you ask different many questions. What are your expectations in life when you see the world? Most of us have basic expectations from life. We all desire comfort, security, health and pleasure because we are embodied spirit. We work for security in terms of pleasure, glory, wealth, power and career. But if our life is just about pleasure, my friends, fun, excitement, food, and drink, we will live a fertile life. Seeking for the things of this world in itself will be incomplete. We will never be satisfied. Never be satisfied. And only person, only one that could satisfy us, my friends, is God. Only God. We must be driven beyond the physical and material aspects of life. As a body spirit, we must seek the higher spiritual things of life. Indeed, we are called to dream of a world where there is peace, harmony, mutual love and support, trust and mutual respect of all regardless race, language, religion and culture. We dream of a world where wealth is more equally distributed and humanity can live in peace and fellowship. We dream of a compassionate world, a gracious world that cares for the marginalized, the sick, the elderly, and those with special needs. We dream of a world when every country is prosperous and advanced, collaborating with each other to make greater progress through trade and sharing of technology. We dream of a world when humanity can live in peace with each other and when they do not see the other as a threat, but as partners in growth and development. We dream of a world where there is no need of a money and the billions of dollars spent on destructive weapons used for the poor and development of people in state. That's what we need to dream. That's what a Christian, that a dream for 
Someone who calls himself or herself a Christian or Catholic, even a decent human being. That should be our dream. But my friend, let me tell you, if we do not, if we do not know God, how come we say we dream of this world? Because all this fine in God. It is only the King of Peace, Jesus Christ, that could bring us. First and foremost, we must acknowledge, we must acknowledge the presence of God, the presence of Christ in our life. We must know that Jesus Christ is our Prince of Peace. And it is, it is that Prince of Peace that you and I, that the church calls us to prepare ourselves to celebrate every year, my friends. Some of you, some of our, I know, even when I was growing up, we used to do it. Every year you look at a run of the house. What is good or what is not good? What you need to dump in the garbage, eh? In offices. What furniture you need to, to get throughout, eh? Throughout. You do it. And that is precisely and exactly what the season advent calls us to do. But the season happened does not cause us to look at our Father tree now, but it causes us to go deep within your hearts, within ourselves, within yourselves. What impact me to grow, to grow in an intimate relationship with my Lord, with my God, with my Savior, with my, with my Redeemer? Do or does Christ or is Christ is the center of my being, is the core of my being? What impacts me to grow, to become more loving, to, be, to become more compassionate, to become more just, to become more respectful, to become more collaborative with one another, to become another Christ, an extension of Christ's love for others? What impacts me? Oh, what sins that blocks me? What lifestyle that I am living that is not in accord with the life of Christ? And Advent calls us to go within that womb, the womb of yourself, the womb, and to look and not to be afraid, my friend, not to be afraid, because it is an, it, a, a spiritual exercise that, that requires, that demands self-sacrifice. Self-sacrifice is very important. And as we light up the, the candle and then during these four weeks of Advent, we become darker, eh? the, the week become darker. But as we come, we light the candles, our Advent season become brighter, brighter. Because we know in the midst of all, Christ never departs from us. Christ is always present to us because our God is a faithful God. My brothers and sisters, let us ask of the Lord this time of Advent to give us the spirit of vision that we may stay awake, we may be alert, and to identify the finger of God in my life. The finger of God in the life of all, the finger of God in my family where God is manifesting His presence. And for us to know, my friends, the season of Advent is not a season for us to spend, to be crazy about. But first, let us concentrate ourselves into prayer, in prayer, to be one in communion with the Lord, to be one in communion with our brothers and sisters, with those who are suffering from injustice, from poverty, from misery, and for us not to kill ourselves in buying, spending while our brothers and sisters are in need. Advent is a time for us to renew our strength, our courage in the Lord, to know that Jesus Christ is the one that is yesterday, today, and it will be forever and ever. May God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
when your friends let us stand and confess our faith. I believe in one God. Throw our darkest 
challenges. Give our families the gifts of peace that free from worry. We may treasure every moment we have together. We ask for this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and until when he came to his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks. He took and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and it open for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a still hour, when someone was handed to the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured for you for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of me. Your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 
Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And in your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace as we wave our hands to each other.
May your mighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only son, of his only begotten son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiant of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. We all say, Amen. Amen. As you are the race of his present life, may he make